Home alone experiences sometimes lead to chilling encounters that send shivers down our spines. When the comforting presence of others is replaced by eerie silence and shadows, even the most mundane occurrences can take on a mysterious and terrifying twist. When I was 14, I babysat my cousin one evening while our family was out. I felt a growing sense of unease as the night progressed, though I couldn't explain why. Despite the discomfort, I continued watching TV with my cousin until something caught my attention. Glancing out the kitchen window, I saw a disheveled man staring at us. Immediately, I knew I had to protect my cousin without alarming him. Acting nonchalant, I suggest we go upstairs, away from the unsettling presence outside. Once in my cousin's room, I realized I needed to secure the house. Drawing on my football experience and physical strength, I armed myself with a meat tenderizing hammer. I ensured the front door was locked and returned to my cousin's room, positioning myself as a barrier between him and any potential threat. With anxiety and determination, I called the police and informed my father and uncle, who were too far away to help immediately. The tension heightened when the intruder shattered a window downstairs, followed by heavy footsteps. Gripping the hammer tightly, I prepared to defend myself. Every passing moment felt like an eternity. The intruder suddenly began climbing the stairs, heading towards my cousin's room. My heart raced as I tried to devise a plan. However, he eventually went back downstairs and opened the basement entrance. The agonizing wait finally ended when the police arrived and apprehended the intruder. Later, we learned that the man was an escapee from a mental hospital. Reflecting on the incident, I realized how close we had come to danger. Trusting my instincts had been crucial, even when I couldn't understand the unease I initially felt. The relief of knowing we were unharmed overwhelmed me. Looking back, I am struck by the magnitude of the danger lurking outside that window. The experience taught me the importance of staying vigilant and trusting my gut instincts. Despite the fear, I managed to protect my cousin and myself. The incident left a lasting impact on me. It made me more aware of my surroundings and taught me the value of quick thinking in dangerous situations. I also recognized the importance of staying calm and reassuring others in distress. I shared my story with others, urging them to trust their instincts and take action if they sense something is wrong. The incident became a constant reminder for me to prioritize safety and always be prepared. Years later, I am grateful that our story had a positive outcome. It serves as a reminder of the potential dangers in the world, but also highlights the strength and resilience we possess when faced with adversity. In the fall of 2016, I moved into half of an ancient house that was built in the 1880s near the original campus of Indiana University. The owners had converted it into a strange duplex. A friend of mine, who had lived there before me, claimed the house was haunted, but I didn't really believe him due to his eccentric nature. The layout of the house was peculiar. When you entered through the front door, you were in a living room area. If you kept walking, there was a doorway leading to a bedroom, and the kitchen was beyond that. There were no doors within the apartment except for the one to the bathroom and another to the shared basement. On my first night there, nothing unusual happened, initially. However, I felt slightly uncomfortable being alone after such a long time, so I was already on edge. I stayed up late and eventually fell asleep, only to wake up around three in the morning. It sounds cliche, I know. What woke me up was what seemed like a group of drummers banging on every flat surface in the living room. It continued for some time, and I was utterly terrified. The noise was an overwhelming cacophony. After two or three minutes, I finally mustered the courage to get up and investigate. As soon as I crossed the threshold into the living room, the drumming abruptly stopped. Nothing else occurred that night, but I didn't get much sleep. A couple days later, a friend came to visit as he was about to leave, we were standing near the front door by my bookshelf. I decided to share my trouble sleeping and the story of the first night with him. As I recounted the events, a book seemingly flew off the bookshelf and landed on the floor about three feet away from us. It had passed by the dresser on the shelf before landing between us. My friend gave me a creeped out look and hastily left and I couldn't blame him. Eventually, I approached the person living in the other half of the house who had been there for eight years. I inquired about the strange occurrences since he had first-hand experience. He told me that no one stayed longer than a year and they all reported similar incidents. Interestingly, he mentioned that nothing ever happened on his side of the duplex, which didn't make sense, but that's what he claimed. 
At the tender age of nine or ten, I found myself alone at home for the second time, granted the freedom by my mother to walk home from school instead of going to daycare. Little did I know that this seemingly ordinary day would transform into a terrifying ordeal that still haunts me. It started innocently enough with a phone call, a routine occurrence of wrong numbers due to our home phone number being similar to that of a tax prep service. However, this call took a horrifying turn that I was ill-prepared for. The voice on the other end demanded to speak to David, insisting that he was present and accusing me of deceit. What began as a perplexing situation quickly escalated into a nightmarish encounter. Under the influence of methamphetamine, the caller unleashed a torrent of profanity and unhinged ranting. My fear grew exponentially as the stranger on the line started describing my home to me with unsettling accuracy. Details like the white facade, the brick pillars adorning the green porch, the unmistakable red doors, and even the presence of a white dog in the backyard were recited to me, causing a chill to run down my spine. The call concluded with a chilling threat. The stranger vowed to find me. Convinced I was concealing the truth, panic consumed me, my heart racing as I dashed to the kitchen, desperate for protection. Grabbing a knife tightly in my trembling hands, I reached out to my mother in a frantic call for help. The pounding and kicking at the door reverberated through the house, sending shockwaves of terror through my fragile frame. At that moment, a primal scream escaped my lips, a cry for salvation in the face of unimaginable danger. Seeking refuge, I sought solace in the bathroom, the only room offering a fleeting sense of security behind its locked door. There I huddled in fear, waiting the arrival of my mother. Finally, the familiar voice of my mother pierced through the deafening silence, accompanied by the reassuring sound of the garage door opening. Overwhelmed by relief, tears streamed down my face as I rushed towards her, still clutching the knife that had become both a symbol of my terror and a feeble shield against the horrors that had unfolded. As I grew older, my mother unveiled the unsettling truth behind this harrowing incident. Uncle David, a man trapped by the clutches of addiction, had inadvertently entangled me in this web of turmoil. The stranger's misguided search for him, fueled by debts and desperation, had thrust me into a vortex of terror, leaving an indelible mark on my psyche. So the next time you find yourself home alone, remember that sometimes the true horror lies not in the monsters under your bed, but in the unsettling possibilities that can arise when the world outside is silenced. You're left alone to confront the darkness within and without. So that's all for today's video. If you like this video, click the like and the bell buttons. We'll have another video for you soon. Take care until then.